Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 2017 in Frankfurt, and today we're at the NEC booth with Oliver Tennant. Oliver, it's been a long time, but uh, let's start at the beginning. For folks that might not know, who is NEC and who do you help? Yeah, so thanks a lot, Rich. Hello again after a full year of break. <laughs> um, yeah, well, NEC, as you might know, is a Japanese-based company. So we in Germany, we have our headquarters in Düsseldorf, the German part. We deal with HPC throughout the whole of EMEA, and we are full-fledged solution provider for comprehensive HPC solutions comprising, well, standard x86-based HPC clusters. But we also do have our own proprietary SX Vector architecture, which we are going to show you in a little bit more detail in a couple of seconds. And in addition, we do have a really good and cool storage portfolio, which we also like to introduce to you. So we're starting our NEC booth tour here now, and what we're looking at is a vector engine. This is a card-mounted processor that plugs into a standard Linux server. <laughs> so this device plugs into this standard server, right? It boots Linux, and then this is almost like an accelerator, isn't it? Uh, this is not an uh, not, uh, accelerator, because our entire application is executed by this processor. And OS function is offloaded from vector processor to x86 processor. Now I understand. Okay. Now, Woody, any closing thoughts, Woody? I mean, uh, did I characterize this wrong, or what would you say? I would rather think about this like a vector machine and a front end. Uh, oh. the, the operation paradigm is different. If you do GPUs, accelerators, you work on the x86, and like nested loops are moved with all the data to the accelerator. In our case, it's the other way around. This machine is doing the work, and this machine is just supporting. That makes a lot of difference because we have less frequent and less, uh, in, in, in the terms of number of data, you have less heavy traffic between those two things. So um, I would rather say, call it this a front end. Well, just a final wrap-up question. Could this potentially scale to petascale or even exascale, you think? Um, what, what is the maximum number that you can connect with InfiniBand and then multiply? Should, okay. should work, I think. Okay. Okay. Great. All right, we're continuing our booth tour here at the NEC booth at ISC, and I'm here with Alex to talk about a new storage device they have here that runs good old-fashioned GPFS, or also known as Spectrum Scale. Did I get that right? That's correct, yes. This is our basic um, RAID controller-based uh, storage system here, where we have a high density. We have 60 drives on 4U. The, all the stuff is RAID controller driven, where we have all the nice things like declustered RAIDs embedded in it, and so. And this storage area is um, completed with a storage server from NEC, which will be sold as some kind of appliance. We can run on this appliance system. We can run as well GPFS, or our our name is GXFS storage appliance. As well, we can well uh, we can run SCADFS on those systems. What is SCADFS? SCADFS is a special system from NEC. It's a parallel file system from NEC, especially for our Aurora system. Ah, okay. okay. So, so targeted at HPC. Yeah, yes, absolutely, so. absolutely. Okay. okay. And what are the advantages of Spectrum Scale? To get back to that, um, in, in terms of resilience and performance. So um, we are approaching a building block approach, so we have a very high scalability with, with our GXFS storage appliance. And um, it should be known that GPFS is very um, reliable and it has a very huge functionality. So you can connect um, less or more any backup or archive system to those systems. You can in uh, incorporate this with encryption for single files or for the whole file system. You have a very huge ability to uh, handle this file system. And what kind of bandwidth are we capable of with this kind of device? This storage area is capable of a bandwidth with up to 12 gigabyte per second. One of these is um, single storage devices. So we're continuing our NEC booth tour here at ISC, and I'm with Eric to learn about JBOD storage. Eric, I heard this thing runs ZFS. Did I get that right? You're right. Uh, we switched our RAID engine on the luster devices to ZFS and uh, actually managed to get quite a bit of performance out of the pure JBOD boxes. Uh, 
beyond Luster that we support since uh, 2007, uh, starting with Luster version 1.6. We started supporting now uh, BGFS and try actually to build other solutions also on top of this platform, like an object storage uh, uh, device. So essentially, this is the basic building block. It is put together with servers uh, to uh, an appliance and it is a multi-purpose appliance. Okay, what, what kind of storage are we talking about here? In, in, is it for you? What, what, what would you say? This is a 4U60 drive, pretty standard box, but built uh, in a pretty solid manner with a nice uh, uh, exp SAS expander technology. Okay. So it's a dual path SAS 12 gigabit uh, device. Okay. And does NEC provide first line support? You've got things like Luster in there, CFS. Uh, we provide support for Luster, um, level 1, level 2 support, uh, if necessary. We work together with Intel. We are actually part of the Luster community as well. So Eric, this being a JBOD, um, what are the advantages of a, a software-based RAID versus what we were used to? We used hardware RAID controllers in the previous generation, uh, and actually since we started uh, providing parallel file systems, and I can tell you, we get more performance out of the software-based systems. This is due to ZFS's superior RAID engine. Uh, in addition to the superiority of the RAID engine and the performance, which uh, I can say out of 60 drives, we get 7.5 to 8 gigabytes a second right now, um, we achieve higher reliability for the data. So in some sense, it's harder to lose data now than before. And uh, yeah, we solve a lot of problems actually with this.